on issue number one is the first book released through Ripperverse Publishing, which makes it extremely significant. This book is part one of the ill-advised art. Now, Avery is what is known as an except, which is what common folk in this area call special people. Darren Fontano, and apparently he has some connection to his family friend. He runs into other except such as Sanswan, Yaira, and the Alpha Court. Who is this family friend and what is their connection with Darren Fontano? How does this impact the psyche of Avery? These are all questions that will be answered in ISOM issue number one. And we don't know anything about this world. We're, like nothing. you said, we're tossed into the middle of everything. Yeah. And it's, which I like, as long as it's filled in later, which I assume it will be, because in this issue, we don't get told a whole lot as far as backstory. These are all questions that will be answered in ISOM issue number one. So, ISOM number one, mm -hmm. uh, from the get, from, we'll start off with the covers. I do not like the covers. I don't like any of them. Uh, none of the covers, no. And so... So right off the bat, when you look at this book, it is absolutely gorgeous. The cover is a nice high gloss cardstock material. And I decided that I'm going to order it and see if it lives up to the hype. So I've been really curious and uh, well, I have watched uh, two other reviews on the book before mine and uh, I felt like one of them was pretty pretty detailed and pointed but i think they're kind of be not trying to be mean here but i think there might have been a biased lean to it and then another one was clearly just a biased lean not in a bad way i saw him issue number one amazing one of the biggest comics uh, in history if not the biggest comic in history and this thing is durable. It's like 90 plus pages of, of material that you're getting with this. And each page is more gorgeous than the next. And the pages are also a very high material and quality to them as well. It's a pretty simple story. Yeah. For now. Yes. It's, it's a world with superheroes mm -hmm. and he's trying to find somebody you're not getting like a marvel product which marvel books almost tend to feel like a newspaper at times so this is extremely sturdy it's a great looking book and it's also a great feeling book you get like 90 plus pages of material and content in here and but as somebody who's been a professional in the industry for five plus years a veteran of the comic book industry for five plus years my friends <laughs> people say that these days I, I don't know what that's about but uh, <laughs> I figured it, I'd give my uh, advice on this. Now, I Sean knows covers. Yep. And we showed these covers to Sean. We did. He was not impressed at all. Yeah, he was like, I hope. I hope. I ho I'm hoping people, I, 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 yes, I'm really hoping there aren't too, too many people blowing smoke up his ass. Tell them that everything right. is perfect because uh, look, covers these are, covers are not perfect. They're no. not great. Like that cover, it's not a cover. Uh, there is no origin story. We don't really get that background in this. And I, I assume there's going to be a flashback in issue two or three or whatnot uh, that really goes back into his past. But when we do get to Isom, we see that he's in a different situation. We see he's a fighter. Uh, we see he's a very successful guy that owns land. These are all questions that will be answered in ISOM issue number one. This makes a black person like he's a, a normal businessman. And so this guy, and this is very subversive to like the SJW agenda. A few moments later. White person, oh, you're the minority. You know, they, they hold their nose up. Yeah, so right off the bat. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> Not but the, the quality of the book is nice. And this thing is durable. It's like 90 plus pages. Of uh, but the black guy owns property. He owns land. He owns his own business. He is just a successful person in society. So uh, you have superheroes in this universe who are called the... Accepts. Accepts. Yes, yeah. the accepts. I'm assuming short for exceptional. Yep, could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she tells him that there's like this girl who's supposed to be working for her and she's disappeared. And there's another guy uh, who's, whose name's Darren and he is a, uh, a bad dude and he's uh, a bad hombre. Kind of for comparison, and I know this is a bad comparison, but just a size comparison. Superman Space Age came out this past week that's 100 pages, no ads in it, and it had like a $10 price tag. This had a $30 price tag. It's very fluid in it. Uh, and this is just, this is 
this is how you know it's good action right here. Uh, it is, uh, it's very dynamic looking. Uh, it's not, it's not straightforward on. You can see there's the dialogue is good. Dialogue is all good. I'd say for the most part, yeah, some of it seemed a little stilted. I was kind of comparing it to my writing because I focused a lot on the character and the relationships. You get inside the book and uh, the writing itself. I don't know if Eric July has written anything else before, or if this is his first time diving into comics or what. But the the writing is a uh, is par. You know, it's nothing exceptional. It's nothing great. It's definitely not bad either. You know, just trying to be honest here. It's exceptionally par. Character work is uh, really a ten out of ten. Also, uh, really awesome stuff. I did feel like, however, there were times where I'm like it's a little stilted it's a little i don't know it, it, I'm, it's hard okay. to describe to me it just it took me out of it a little bit uh there's there's moments in it where uh like uh, it's very clear and defined and there's moments in it where it's kind of hokey even you know like some of it you have to read over twice because it just doesn't flow necessarily great on that front a plus 10 out of 10. uh the like i said the art a plus 10 out of 10. Uh, i'd read these guys art all day long uh, and uh, good stuff. So on the uh, character side, this is where it gets interesting. And in every situation, there's a couple of editorial misses on the writing end. Uh, just just to point one out uh, right there, it'll uh, be a message for all my history with them. Gives us an, like that that whole bubble there, like is just jacked up from front to back. Now. When it comes to when the fight scenes with the art, they're not the strongest. They're okay, but really, they're. It, 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 he's a major fleshed out character. He's he's great on that level, and uh, and so's his sister. Good stuff. Uh, the Darren guy's a bit of a Bond villain. So for one of them, uh, the character designs. We'll get into that, <laughs> but. For uh, some of the some of the fight scenes were really hard to get through, in my opinion. I'm one of those people that the the fluidity of the comic is a big deal. There isn't that one action packed panel, page, or moment. You know, I was really hoping we would have seen one moment where our heroes, like we clock someone, you would see the jaw going to the side or yeah. get knocked through a wall. You, where they're supposed to happen. You don't get that. If this was Batman, and this was the first issue of Batman, instead of just seeing like a Batman adventure where you get like two pages of Bruce Wayne doing something like that, he flipped the script on that and actually made it all about like Bruce Wayne, uh, his relationship with his family, and then uh, you know that that call to action is is actually where it ends, where you really don't get a lot of uh, I'd say like super heroic action. It apparently dodges a punch kicks him in the back the dude sits up they square off and then in the very next panel they're flying through the air backlit like you're reading a manga or watching like dragon ball z or something and then the very next panel they're just like away from each other with skids on the ground so there's there's a lot of stuff like that when it comes to the fighting where it's just not fluid like and there were several oh shit moments where there should have been should have been and i could tell they were but it wasn't conveyed convincingly yeah i think we've gone a little too far in most modern comics these days into well they have motivations too that are that are reasonable no you don't want the villains to be reasonable i agree i agree with that on here i like villains being bad the other thing is that the storyline isn't something that's just like crazy out of this world creative um it's pretty standard that's that's the story uh so what I'll say about this, uh, I, I guess we'll go into the, just the various parts. There's world building, there's character building, uh, there's pacing uh, from a writing perspective, and then there's, of course, dialogue. A place with such interesting beings, like many other planets. Uh, Isom was a part of this, and he's trying to hide it uh, from his family. He's trying to hide it from the world, and I don't know why he's trying to hide it. We'll have to figure that out in next issues. These are all questions that will be answered in Isom issue number one which you could...